Hello, my name is Vinia Cheetah, and I'm the Plant Records Curator for the Morris County Park Commission. Today I'm going to be talking about the conifer collection at the Freeland Kaisen Arboretum. Uh, okay, so let's get started. <laughs> Recently, in just this past July, the, the Freeland Kaisen Arboretum was certified as a reference garden by the American Conifer Society. Reference gardens are a way for the ACS to work with gardens to promote the use of and education about conifers. It'll be a great partnership for both of our organizations as there aren't any reference gardens in New Jersey currently. And you can see this on the map on the right. And the ACS encourages reference gardens to apply for grants to further develop their collections, as well as engage with the community. So now that we've joined, we can add a star on the map to show roughly where we are between New York City and Philadelphia. And uh, I've also listed some key numbers here on the green block box. Uh, those are regarding the current diversity of conifers in our collection, and that's an important part of applying for reference garden status. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that on the next slide. Listed here are our uh, genera. We have 26 genera currently in our collection. In order to become certified, you had to meet certain standards, and the first was the diversity of the collection. Other things that they look for is our labeling practices and our maintenance practices. Fortunately, our collection has been in development for 50 years, so we already have a pretty good collection and we were able to get certification. I've also pictured here one of our popular specimens, Suppressus nucatensis moonshot, that can be easily found by going towards the visitor center as during, instead of turning left to go into the building, you would turn right and go out into the gardens. Uh, when I went to photograph it, I also saw that it was covered in tiny cones, so I took a photo for that as, of that as well. Next, I wanted to show you where you could find some of our conifers if you've decided to come to the garden to look around. Uh, we're certainly encouraging that now that we're a reference garden. On this map, I've added a few spots to help you get your bearings. I've included the Education Center, which is over here, the mansion here, and the exit drive here. Looking at the colors, the gray is our hardscapes, asphalt, which is parking lots, some of our trails and driveways. The blue is waterways, these brown lines are our trails, and green show the grounds. Um, each of the yellow dots is, indicates the location of an individual plant, specifically one of our conifers. We keep information on all of our conifers in digital records called an accession record. And so when we went out during inventory, we collected information on where they were and keep this coordinate data in the accession record. So first I want to show you the area that has the most conifers in our collection, which is the Pinetum, indicated here by this red star. That's the area that has the most concentrated amount of conifers planted together, and that area can be easily accessed by going to the back of the parking lot and taking the trails down. Another area to go if you're interested in visiting to look at our conifers is the Progressive Garden, which is located near the, like, the front entrance and first parking area. After that, you might want to go to the last parking area across from our event tent space, um, and there's a large grouping of conifers there. The last spot I would really recommend going is going to our rock garden, which is located right near the Haggerty Education Center. Next, I wanted to point out that some of our conifers are actually New Jersey champion trees. We have six currently represented in that program. These include an Aves Fraseri. Acedrus diodara albospica, Suppressus nucatensis pendula, Picea orientalis, Pinus coriensis, and a Sequoia dendron gigantium hazel smith, which is pictured here on this slide. I think this is particularly beautiful, and you can come see it by looking, uh, coming to our, in front of the education center. I took these images earlier this year, and I really think it shows how stunning and majestic this tree is, how big, with this beautiful bark, but also when you look up close, you can see the details on these beautiful textured needles with this lovely pale blue color. Several of our champion trees are currently being promoted through this year's big tree tour. So feel free to reach out to our education department for a tour guide. Uh, and if you wanna see the rest, just take a walk down to the Pinetum. Next, I wanted to show you this chart. Since I keep track of all these plant records, I get a lot of questions about our plants, especially ones that have been here for a long time. So lately I've been asked by a lot of people, how old is our conifer collection and when was it developed? Of course, building our collection has taken time and you can see the years it's been in development on the horizontal axis of this chart. 
The Arboretum was donated to the Park Commission in 1969 and was dedicated in 1971. So you can see that was about the period where our record keeping began. And in this image, I vertically stacked the data for the number of conifers added to the pinetum specifically, those are in dark green on top, as well as the number of conifers added to the total site, which are in light green. This allows us to look at the overall development of the collection on the site and our localized collection in the pinetum. Most people assume, since it's an old collection with very large specimens, that it was mostly developed in the 1970s. However, when we look at this chart, we can see that the most significant development of conifers was actually in the late 90s through the mid 2000s when there was a pretty big spike. This chart does show there was a fair amount planted early on, but we can see that the collection wasn't really a focus because the planting stopped for a while. It was really low in the late 70s and into the early 90s, and some years we don't see any dark green at all, so it shows that there was no conifers being planted in the pinetum during that time. I also wanted to point out that you will see this very large spike that was recent in about 2018. Uh, most of that is because we had a large buffer planting where we planted one species along a fence line, as well as when we did recent inventories, we added in a number of trees that were already existing on the property and put them in the accession record and started keeping records on them. So that's why it looks like we suddenly added so many more but we are actually planning a selection of new cultivars that we would like to plant and different species. So now that we've achieved reference garden designation, we do want to further develop our collection. And now I'd like to show you some of our most recent additions because we have been adding some wonderful new conifers to our collection. The first that I want to talk about is Pinus coriensis silver ray. It was planted this summer in the pinetum and it's noted for its silvery blue twisted needles. We also found that ours has some great cones on it, so you should definitely go down there and check that out. Next, we also got a South African species, which we're growing in a pot because it's not hardy here, but this is Podocarpus elongatus monmol, which is trademarked as icy blue. And this name is on the nose because this Cape Yellowwood has distinctive blue foliage and it was on display in our blue garden this year. A third new conifer that was planted in the collections in 2021 was this Picea engelmanii bushes lace. You can already see that it has a somewhat pendulous habit and it maintains this powder blue color year round. So this color and size should be a great fit in the arboretum and its location since it's near a few really large dark uh, conifers. Next, I wanted to highlight a few of my favorite conifers in the collection and hopefully offer a little teaser for you that haven't been to see our conifer collection. This first one is Cedrus deodara snow spray and it's located in our rock garden. I love the sea green color of the needles and the graceful arch of the branches at the tips where it dips down. As you can see in the top right image, it also really glows in the sunlight. So it's a great selection for brightening up the garden um, in any dark locations and the new growth will actually emerge white each year. Next, I also want to talk about blue foliage, as well as just interesting foliage shapes. So the first one is Cedrus atlantica, and I love that they grow in these tufted clusters all along the branch, like some had, someone had pipetted them on, and again they have this beautiful light blue color. The image on the bottom right is Avis coriana horstman's silver lock, and this one has needles that are upwardly curved, which shows off the silvery white undersides. The texture is so unusual, and it almost looks more like a cryptomeria than an abies, uh, just because it has so much curve. So it's another very interesting one. Next is Pinostrobus hillside winter gold. Uh, this one I noticed when I was performing inventory earlier this year, and I was instantly drawn to these golden needles on this pine, and I'd never seen one like it and hadn't noticed that before. So fortunately, I took a few photos at the time and put them in the database. And so that's what the image that you're seeing on the left. Well, I went back again this fall and was looking around. And when I looked at it again, I saw that so much of it had turned green as it had this new growth come out. And you can see that those golden needles are still there under all the old growth. But now it has this two-toned look. And so now that the weather's getting cooler, it'll get colder and those green needles will turn to gold as well. And I do recommend looking at this tree when the sun is on it because this is another one that can really glow and has beautiful color. 
Uh, the last one, or the next one I was going to show you, is probably the most surprising one for me. When I saw it during inventory, I was just shocked to see that it was a Texas. It's a Texas Bacata Amherst Fort. The foliage looks almost succulent, and it just looks like unlike any other yew. It's also a dwarf size. This one is planted in our raised alpine garden. You can grow up to eight feet tall, but this one has been maintained at a much smaller size, so it almost resembles a bonsai. The name also has an interesting origin because Amherst Fort was evidently the name of an asylum where this plant was found in Holland. Um, also on this one, I wanted to point out that on the very front, you can see this little bit of orange and you can see this wire. That is an accession tag that has the identifying information on the plant. We also typically label our plants with a black display label that also has the plant information on there for the public to see. So uh, having the labels is a really important part of reference garden designation. And so we do want to keep everything properly labeled and have it be accurate and able to be read by people. So if you ever see a label that's missing or if you spot an error, please let me or another staff member know because we definitely will want to correct it and have that information available for everyone. Okay, the last one I wanted to discuss is this one. This one is very common, but I do like this particular specimen, so I wanted to add it to this presentation. It's Juniperus procumbens nana, and what makes this one special is its growth habit. It was planted on a slope near these large stone slabs that installs a walk walkway in our rock garden. The specimen has sprawled across the stones, as you can see in this image, but it has also sprawled down the slope. So I think the form really perfectly complements these stones, and it doesn't impede the functionality either. So it's very easy for a plant to just become this mass that you walk by and you're just blind to it. But with this one, I think it really highlights um, the form on the specimen by the rocks, and it adds some character to the landscape, and just always stuck out to me because of the way it was planted. So that's the end of my presentation today about the conifers and our recent designation as, in conif as a reference garden through the American Conifer Society. If you have any other questions about plant records or about our conifers, feel free to reach out to me at the email address on the bottom. Thank you.